And here's the world map. So we have the Piclopedia and we have the treasures. Let's take a look at the Piclopedia. So the Piclopedia will basically keep track of all of the creatures and plants that we encounter. And we have Olmar's notes on them, so... The Dwarf Red Bulborb. Pensaris Pseudoculiae Rusus Breadbug Family. I am terrible with fake Latin names. Although initially identified as a juvenile Red Bulborb, groundbreaking new research indicates that this creature is in fact a member of the Breadbug Family, a close relative of the vanilla Breadbug. It escapes predation through mimicry. Unique adaption of the Red Bulborb's crimson coloration allows the species to safely commingle. Such effective adaptation and obfus obfuscation by a prey species is rare, indicating this clever creature is a master of mimicry. So that's interesting, they're not just baby versions of the big red bull boobs. They're just pretending. Pellet posies! You can also throw uh, pick pick carrots at them, which is fun. Pellet posy, Amplus Nutrio, pellet weed family. In the stem of the pellet posy, one can observe the muscle fiber unique to half plant, half animal species such as Pikmin and candy pop flowers. So the pellet posy is a species that can be considered a close relative. Although the ability to crystallize nectar is unique to a small group of the pellet weed family, the fact that these plants reach maturity so quickly and that their pellets contain such high concentration of the natural nutrients in the soil explains why the Pikmin and so many of the other indigenous species are so reliant on these pellets for sustenance. Then we can also go to the treasures. Courage Reactor, Olmar's Journal. We've recovered our first treasure. Amazingly, the Pikmin remembered how to salvage it. I can't understand their adorable language, and I don't know what they're thinking, yet I'm so happy to see them. When I crashed on this planet, the Pikmin helped me locate my missing, missing ship parts. In my darkest hour, the Pikmin were there for me. Now that I'm reunited with them, I know everything will be alright. It will, right? Do 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 do. Alright. We'll go to the area selection. We'll take a look at that occasionally, but we don't need to. Alright, so we still only have one world, the Valley of Repose, so we're going to have to go back there for day two. The Valley of Repose. So the Valley of Repose is the winter world, in case people didn't know. <laughs> but obviously you guys did. You're smart. You're smart, cookies. Bonk, 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 bonk. It's a dawn. It's a new day. Good morning, workers. Ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? <laughs> I hate corporate America. <laughs> Not really. The Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What lazy creatures. No wonder they lack survival skills. Stand beneath the onion and press A to call them out. Can do. Will do. Done. So yeah, we can call them out. Bring out our 20 red Pikmin. Louie, you can stay there and just kind of observe. Okay, still nothing up there. It's a bit of a shame. So you can see there, that is a pellet prosy that is currently growing. We don't want to take it out just yet. We want to wait for it to be fully grown. Aha! <laughs> How serendipitous. There you go. So as you can see, there's a time limit at the top of the screen now. That sun is moving along the bars. When it reaches the end, it'll be nighttime. Just something to keep an eye on. So as you can see, I left Louie back at the base, so that way he can kind of pluck- I can switch to him to pluck the Pikmin as they, uh, get created. Is there anything down there? No, there is not. Yeah, so I can do that. Swap over to Louie. So multitasking in this game is actually pretty fun and very well done. Again, I do really like this game. <laughs> I'm not sure if Louie will continue plucking Pikmin over there if I switch away. I think they did in Pikmin 3, but Pikmin 3 also improved on a lot from Pikmin 2. Oh, poor little Pikmin. Here, you can help carry some of these pellets. There you go. Isn't that nice? Oh, wait. One thing we can do, 
If we get Olmar and Mui on our control at one time, we can pluck the Pikmin at the same time and make it go twice as fast. Nice job, Louie. We now have enough Pikmin to crush this bag. Thank goodness there was more pellet posies to, for us. Actually, no, we don't. Oh-ho! There we go! <laughs> so we want to build up our Red Pikmin army. Now, we can't have more than 100 Pikmin on the field at any given time. And since we're doing a no deaths playthrough, once we hit 100 Red Pikmin, there's no point in getting any more. So that is something to keep in mind, but uh, right now... <laughs> Red Pikmin are our only Pikmin type, and we need as many of them as we can get, so... Definitely gonna be growing these for the good of our company. And for our survival, of course. Louis, thank you for being patient. I've brought enough Pikmin to crush the bag! So now we have a large amount of Pikmin, 47. There we go! I threw one directly on its back, so it crushed them immediately. What I really like about Pikmin 2 that I don't like that they took away in Pikmin 3 is that you can use the C-Stick to swarm. And you can just swarm the Pikmin on stuff and move them around really easily. They have, like, the charge move in Pikmin 3, which is kind of similar, but not really. Okay. This is our first real enemy. This is the Red Bulborb. Okay, good. I remember when I when I recorded some of my videos for my Let's Play that I didn't go up with, um, he ate some of my Pikmin. I literally lost to the Red Bulborb, like, almost immediately, which was embarrassing. Okay. We gotta break this gate down, so we'll dismiss the Pikmin. They'll start breaking it. The they should start breaking it down, but apparently not. There we go. Louie, you can hang out over there. Omar, let's go back to base. Doopy doopy doop doop. So as far as the Pikmin types go, Red Pikmin are unique in that they are fire resistant. So if we face any fire enemies or hazards, we're going to want the Red Pikmin in order to deal with them. Red Pikmin are also slightly more powerful than your average Pikmin. I, n I can't remember if they have, like, 1.25 times the strength or 1.5 times the strength. So they either have, like, 25% extra strength or 50% extra strength. It's one of those two. But they are, they are more powerful than your average Pikmin, so... That's nice. They're a bit combat-based. <laughs> but we're going to get another type of Pikmin that's way more combat-based, so... There's not going to be a whole lot of point in the Red Pikmin after a while. Alright, so that's a treasure. Gotta bring that back. Look at that, we got 70 Pikmin already. This is great. Come here, little Pikmin! That treasure is going to take a little bit of time, even with 44 Pikmin on it. That treasure is, is kind of slow, because it's heavy. And also my Pikmin are Leaf Pikmin, which are the slowest type. <laughs> Hopefully I can find some Nectar soon. Here. We have more workers. <laughs> Louis like, this is great. I just get to sit around here all day doing nothing. <laughs> Although you're also on ice icy part of the planet, so maybe moving around would actually warm you up and be more beneficial. Who knows? Alright, here we go. Second treasure of the run. 170 Pokos, that's a lot. Utter scrap. <laughs> I love how it, it looks like a, a face with a mustache, like, whoa! 
I love that. It's a crushed tin can. Uh, what's this can of? Is it like apple juice? Or like a... It's probably a fruit drink of some kind. 170 Pokos. You have to keep in mind that the early game treasures are worth a lot. As we progress through the game, the treasures will generally be worth less and less. So you can see we have a 450 Pokos out of 10,000. We're already approaching a tenth of the way to the end of the game. Because once we repay our debt, we beat the game. Now, I'm going to see if I can get 100% with no deaths. <laughs> because I, I really want a challenge. I'm pretty confident that I can repay the debt. And get, like, the regular ending. Oh, they're done! How could Pikmin destroy such a massive wall when mass their might is ferocious? Louis, did Olimar instruct you on proper Pikmin commanding protocol? Apparently not. Olimar, you are failing in your duty as a superior. Allow me to explain. Press A to grab Pikmin and release to throw them. Call them into a group with B. Press X to disband the group. Use the C-stick to issue orders and objectives to the group. C is useful for swarming Pikmin around treasure and enemies, or making them march in a line. Yes, the C-stick is really nice. One of those things that I really, really wish was in Pikmin Free. One of my few complaints of Pikmin Free. Again, the charge function was not the same. It was useful, but it was not the same. It took a lot longer to do and wasn't nearly as flexible. Like, look at this. This is all stuff that I'm doing with the C-Stick, moving the Pikmin as, as they are. It can be useful not just for, like, swarming them all over one area, but it's also quite useful for um, stealth operations. If you're like, okay, there's an enemy over here, got to avoid it. Everyone move to the left. <laughs> so that you don't accidentally wake the sleeping giant. All right, the day's over half over. Let's regroup our Pikmin. Luby hasn't gotten to do anything, so... Everyone follow Luli, and this is the main gimmick of Pikmin 2 right here. Which I have mixed feelings on. Interesting. Warm air is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both show expressions of unease. Do not fear. The leader's group of Pikmin will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod to... Approach the hole and press A to jump in. Yeah, the main so the main gimmick of Pikmin 2, kind of, other than the two captains, are these holes that will be around the area. So, this one is the Emergence Cave. Enter this hole with your Pikmin squad. Yes, so we have zero treasures within, and we're entering with 70 out of our 70 Pikmin. Yes. This is where most of our pain is going to arrive from, are these holes that we find throughout the game. These are basically dungeons. The Emergence Cave, sub-level 1. Intriguing, my heat sensors indicate that this hole's interior is warmer than on the surface. Analysis suggests subterranean areas may support different life forms than the surface. If you wish to check underground terrain, press start slash pause to communicate with me. I am not just a ship, I am an all-purpose support pod. Yeah, so these are basically the dungeons of the game, where you enter these holes and there will be a series of, like, floors you have to go through. There will be enemies and treasure on each floor as well as usually a boss at the bottom, and time doesn't pass when you're in these caves. So most of the game takes place in these caves. Again, I have a love-hate relationship with this. I want Louis to be the leader. Because it is unique, and they are kind of fun, but they also do drag the game out. Because again, there's less overworld ex exploration, it's a bit more linear. And some of these caves get frustratingly difficult. So, to begin with, there's a bottle cap here. Let's definitely grab that. And then there are these new enemies. These are dwarf... Or, not dwarf. These are snowy bulb orbs. Uh, they're not too bad. I think they're actually slightly easier than the dwarf red bulb orbs, because they're, I think they're less attentive. They're either slightly less attentive than the dwarf reds, or they're slightly more attentive. I can't remember. But it's our first treasure of the dungeon. <laughs> it's a 7-up cap. The quenching emblem. <laughs> hey, I have this great new device. It beeps whenever 7-up is near. There it is! Oh, man. The product placement is strong in this game, and I love it. Alright. 
So these guys won't be too bad. I mean, we have 62 Pikmin. We could just swarm them. For this guy, though, I'm going to try to throw one directly on his back. Yeah, so these... Yeah, these guys are not very attentive. They they e It takes a lot to make them alert, and it's very easy for them to lose interest. Cool. Easy. All right. Let's swarm this orange that's apparently a treasure, as well as all of the Bulborb corpses. And that's easy. And then they'll just all bring those back to the ship. Yeah, I do, I do like the dungeons, but I also kind of dislike them. I, I do really like the overworld exploration and all the puzzles that you can get, and you still get that to an extent in Pikmin 2, but most of the game takes place in these uh, dungeon areas. How can you possibly consider this beast a treasure? Beasts are incompatible with my circuitry. I suppose I will store your finds in my hold. But I do not think beasts will be worth much. So you can take the be the enemy corpses back to the ship underground. So if you take them back above ground, they'll go into the Pikmin onions, and you'll get more Pikmin from them. If you take them to the ship underground, it will technically treat them as treasures, but they'll only be worth, like, a small handful of Pogos. So the treasures are still far more valuable. Like, the beasts were selling for two Pogos. This one sells for 180. This is the Citrus Lump. Nice. It's an orange. I'm surprised the orange hasn't gone moldy at this point. There we go, we're almost a thousand Pocos in. So did you hear that sound effect? When you hear that sound effect, it means there are no more treasures on this current sub-level of the dungeon. <laughs> Welcome, Pop-Tarts. Yes, the stress game. And I'm doing no deaths, so the double whammy. This hole appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate more treacherous terrain ahead. Louis... You do recall that you can adjust the camera with L, R, and Z, correct? Yeah, but it's kind of dumb. Your expression suggests you do. Excellent. Then approach the hole and press A to enter it. One thing I didn't know about this game... Um, you don't need... En you, well, you need the Pikmin under your control when you first enter the dungeon. When you're entering the new sub levels, you can have zero Pikmin under your control, and all of them will follow you. This will be important to know later on. So I have no Pikmin under my control, but when I enter... Boom, all 70 of our Pikmin are following us, even though they were, weren't were being commanded by me. What's also nice is that the game will save you, your game at, after each sub-level, which means that if we have a Pikmin die, we can just reset the sub-level, which is admittedly very nice. And we're already on the final floor. The first dungeon, the Emergence Cave, is the shortest and the easiest. It only has two floors. Pretty simple. Get over here. All right, yoink! Wow, lucky shot on that guy. And we have 70 Pikmin, so we can easily just swarm the other one. Hey, look! It's a map of the important part of the world. I mean, what? <laughs> it's inconceivable that such an immense object has been buried here for so long. The design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. Perhaps this can be used for something other than salvage. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even 100 red Pikmin will be unable to lift it. Well, that's a problem. We can only have 100 Pikmin out. Yep, naturally, it takes 101 Pikmin to lift this, so... Well, we'll have to leave that behind. Hey, bro! What's up? You tried to eat my Pikmin, but you couldn't. Now I will sell your corpse on the black market! Doo -doo. I need to work on my aim a little bit more. I can sometimes get the dead shot, but uh, oftentimes not. There! Ha <laughs> ha! alley -oop. Uh, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Astounding! A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snowy landscape. Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. 
Well, all right then, if that's what they want. It's what I want, too. You can throw up to five Pikmin in the flower, and then boom! A different color. And now we get the most busted Pikmin in the game. <laughs> Used to think they were the worst. Nope, they are the best. <laughs> Amazing! A purple Pikmin. It has hair. And it is quite stocky. It seems very heavy and strong. This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into flowers? Intriguing. Perhaps they are our others? Yeah, purple Pikmin are stupidly good. They can lift ten times the weight of regular Pikmin. They weigh ten times as much, and I think they're twice as powerful. Alright, toss in five more red Pikmin here. And the only way to get purple Pikmin is by throwing fins into purple flowers. They don't actually get their own Pikmin onion, which is annoying. It's hard to get a bunch of purple Pikmin. But we shall, we shall do our best. Alright, now what, what the game wants us to do is to go back with the purple Pikmin and then lift up that treasure back there. But uh, actually, no. I, we're going to leave the dungeon, because if we leave now and come back, the purple flowers will regrow so we can get more purple Pikmin. Astounding! Water is shooting out of this geyser with incredible force. Sensors indicate that it has enough power to launch you into the air. Approach it and press A to try. Well, I thought only blue Pikmin were able to withstand water, but no, in this game, when it comes to geyser shooting us upwards, Pikmin don't drown. Yep, we'll escape to the surface with our Pikmin. And once again, it'll have all of our Pikmin, even the ones that are not under our control. We get the Citrus Lump and the Quenching Emblem, and we got 22 Pokos from killing from bringing Beast Carcasses back, and no Pikmin died. Alright, now I can't remember if it's going to automatically end the day now, because we finished our first cave, or if it won't, because we didn't get the uh, Northern Hemisphere treasure. Nope, I think it's going to automatically end the day for us. Which is a bit of a shame. No no low day count for me. You have successfully returned to the planet's surface. Excellent decision-making, gentlemen. We must celebrate your first successful spelunking expedition. You've j gathered a large amount of data that needs in-depth analysis. I shall send a report back to the president tonight detailing your progress. But I want to still explore. Oh, I can still explore! Oh, wonderful. I thought for sure it was going to automatically end the day, but nope, we didn't get the uh, Northern Hemisphere piece, so that's not going to happen. Cool. Alright. Now if we press X to disband the groups, they'll, the Pikmin automatically separate based on color. Which is useful for us, because we don't want certain colors of Pikmin doing certain things. For example, we don't want purple Pikmin running into fire geysers. Okay, still nothing down there. I, c I couldn't remember if there were any more flowers. Sounds like they're chanting, Smurf, Smurf, Smurfs! Yes, I know the Smurfs is a great TV show, but you don't have to keep chanting about it. That was interesting. Yeah, so the purple Pikmin will just carry it back to the red flower. Because that's... It was being carried primarily by red Pikmin. I, ca I can't resist. I want to get as many Pikmin as I can. I at least want to get to 100 of each type of Pikmin. Or at least a hundred of each Pikmin that we either need a hundred of, or who have onions, so therefore it's easy to get a hundred of their type. Yink. So 
So, so far, so good. Nobody has died. Wow, I forgot how slow purple Pikmin are. Yes, purple Pikmin, especially if they're leaf Pikmin, are exceedingly slow. But when it comes to combat, no, no one's better. So we'll go back into the emergence cave. We found two treasures inside. There's still one more that awaits. We can get more purple Pikmin this way. But you can only do this once. You can go back in once to get more purple Pikmin. If you try doing it more, then they will not regrow. So purple Pikmin. So if you hold the Pikmin with the A button, and then you use left and right on the D-pad, boink, we can switch between holding different colors of Pikmin. So just watch what the purple Pikmin do. They automatically home in on enemies, smash them, do incredibly high damage, and can stun them by smashing them. Like, it's ridiculous. They're so good at, at combat. And they can just destroy a lot of the bosses in the game effortlessly because of it. <laughs> hey, Nintendo Addict, welcome! I No! So far, so good. No deaths. But also, I'm at the very beginning of the game where it's easy. So, I'm sure that's going to change. But I'm having fun. I actually really do like Pikmin 2. Pikmin 2 might be my favorite of the Pikmin games. I think Pikmin 3 is a better game, but I think I may enjoy Pikmin 2 more. Although that very well might change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I stunned it. I stunned the guy by throwing the purple Pikmin on him. All right, now we will grab... <laughs> we will grab America, the treasure. <laughs> I'm just going to punch this guy to death. And you know what's interesting? These vicious beasts here that are trying to eat your Pikmin, they're herbivores, because Pikmin are, like, basically living vegetables. They're not carnivores, which is really interesting. So, like, all of these giant predators that we face are actually herbivores. <laughs> Because they they don't the, they don't try to eat us they try to eat the Pikmin. <laughs> exactly, Nintendo addict. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> the way I see it, if I do well, I've I've wanted to do this challenge for a while because I think what this will basically do is force me to learn all of the strategies for dealing with enemies. And also, once I do this, I won't really want to play Pikmin two again for a long time. So I think that's the real the real plus. And here we go, 200 Pokos, the spherical atlas. We've got America, and we got it. Actually, well, it's the Northern Hemisphere, so yeah. Good, good, good amount of the of the countries are up here. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside this sphere, retrieving data. Error. I could only decode a portion of the data, but I did retrieve new geographic charts. I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the Sphere Chart. Press start slash pause to contact me and access the Explorer kit on the radar screen with L. Now that we have this new data, you should explore the decoded territory tomorrow. Yay, we unlock a new world. <laughs> and now the Pikmin are humming the Luigi's Mansion theme. That's... eerie. <laughs> yeah, so we can press pause and we get this map here so we can look around. We don't always have all of the map available to begin with, though, so gotta watch out for that. As for items, look at all that stuff. Those are all of the upgrades that we can get. So we, we still have 11 more to grab. <laughs> Surprise! You thought you had enough of me last time I visited, but you were wrong. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That snowball over there is just like, nothing weird's happening. My gosh. Purple Pikmin are really, really good. Oh, yep. And sure enough, because we left and came back, even though it's the same day, boom, two more flowers. So now we can get 20 Purple Pikmin in one day, as opposed to just 10. And trust me, we want as many purple Pikmin as we can get our hands on. <laughs> They're incredibly good. Remember Rock Pikmin from Pikmin Free? Yeah, Pik purple Pikmin are literally better versions of Rock Pikmin. And Rock Pikmin were already really good. <laughs> there we go. Found all the treasure. We got <laughs> 20 purple Pikmin. There we go. That's what I was after. 
Still can't believe those Pikmin don't drown going in there. We get the Spherical Atlas! And now, because we found every treasure in the cave, we get that nice little Cave Complete Confetti uh, sign. Beautiful. Free out of free treasures. Small cave. Easy cave. Now the game's gonna ramp up in difficulty. <laughs> this game is a very, very steep learning curve. Like, at first you start out, you're like, oh, this is, this is pretty easy, then it's like, <laughs> we'll Wait till you see some of the later caves. <laughs> They're sadistic in how difficult they are. Olimar and Louis, since you will explore a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable. You may not realize it, but you are both exhausted. You should take a much-needed rest, as you have all the time you need to collect treasure. Haste makes waste, so take it slow and steady. I like the unlimited time limit. Puts me at ease. Wish I had that in real life. That's nice. Even though, even though we're forcing, even though Hakate Freight is forcing their employees to work like seven days a week on a distant planet with no breaks, they at least are just like, nope. Make sure you go away before sunset and get some nice needed rest. <laughs> that is extremely apt, Nintendo Attic. Yes, the game drags you in, sucks you in, lures you in, and then bashes your face clean in. That is exactly what it does. We got the Spherical Atlas, the Utter Scrap, Citrus Lump, Quenching Emblem, and 22 coins from selling beasts on the black market. We now have 56 red Pikmin and 20 purple Pikmin for a total of 76. Now, even though we lost some red Pikmin in order to get purple Pikmin, that doesn't count as Pikmin dying. So, all of these. Di Pik Pikmin dying in battle. Pikmin dying to sunset. Pikmin dying to fire. People. Pikmin dying to water. Pikmin dying to electricity. Pikmin dying to explosions. And Pikmin dying to poison. None of those are going to happen. <laughs> or if they do happen, we're going to reset and save scum. Day two. Baby steps first, Olimar. Plan well and don't worry about me. Our debt is with happy Hakatate savings and loan, after all. Besides, there's nothing left to repossess, so ha! Huh? <laughs> Yet, yeah, I still want my dolphin back. Do you have any idea what I had to do to get the dolphin back in the first game. 